Hi, so in this video we're going to start talking about finding the missing length in a right angle triangle. And we're going to use something called trigonometry. Uh, some people call it Sokatoa, so I'm just going to put that up on the board just so it reminds us. Um, I'm going to write it up as so ka toa and the reason I've written it like that is because it reminds me that I've got opposite over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent. And that will become hopefully a little bit clearer when I write uh, uh, the exam uh, question uh, up on the board. However, if you have a look at MathsRap .co.uk, that will give you quite a lot of information about this particular type of calculation. So what I'm going to do is use a GCSE question, roundabout level B, and it's actually valued at three marks at level B. So um, it involves a right angle triangle, okay, and it's a right angle triangle with the 90 degree angle over there. And the information that it gives uh, on the question is that this angle is 24 degrees and this length along here is actually 6.2 centimetres. Okay. And I will also write this in the description uh, section on the video on YouTube or you can have a look at the same uh, the question on the MathsRap post. Okay, what they're asking us to do as part of the question is to calculate this value. So I'm going to call it X along here. Okay, um, one of the things about these type of questions, and it's just really as a tip actually, is that sometimes they call, they'll say things like it's A, B and C and the angle A, C, B is 24 degrees and they want you to calculate length C, B. All of that is absolutely fine. I personally find it a little bit confusing. So my, my suggestion for, for me, and, and really, you know, you might want to take it, is actually you just ignore these um, and just draw a triangle on your question paper so that it's a little bit more meaningful to you. And it kind of cuts out all of the, the clutter and the bits and pieces that they tend to put with these questions. Okay, so the key issue with dealing with Sokotoa or dealing with trigonometry is that actually you do need to label this triangle in a way that is relevant to the formulas it themselves. So what we're going to look at is that the, the length of any right angle triangle is the longest length is always called the hypotenuse. So I'm going to put just height there, okay? The other thing to be aware of is that um, we're, we're looking at the 24 degrees angle here. So opposite this 24 degrees is this length over here. So we're going to call that the opposite. It's not always that side. Um, if, for instance, we were given this angle at the top here, then this length here would be the opposite. Okay? So... The other uh, label that you need to put is that adjacent to the 24 degrees is this length here, which I'm going to just put adjacent. Okay, now if you label up your diagram um, like that, it will give you the ability then just to have a look at the formula and put these different relationships or numbers into the formula in order to calculate the answer. Okay, so the information that I have is I know hypotenuse and I also know the angle of 24 degrees. So if I look at my Sokotoa here, the, the hypotenuse there and the hypotenuse there I've got, which is great. So I can use either sine or cosine. Now the other thing that I'm looking for is the adjacent. Well, um, with sine, it talks about the opposite, which I haven't got. I don't know that information. So actually, the formula or the relationship I'm going to use is this one, which is the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, because the adjacent is what I'm looking for. I have the hypotenuse, and I know that it's an angle of 24 degrees. 
So I'm going to write that out um, as, I'll write it out longhand as cosine equals um, adjacent, so A, D, J, A, C, E, N, T, over hypotenuse. I think this is the correct spelling, I'm not entirely sure, but if it isn't, please uh, forgive me. Um, I will check it, but I think it's spelled like that. So hypotenuse, most people just write hype, H-Y-P, and A-D-J, which just makes things a little bit easier, and they'll write it as something like cos 24 degrees, which is perfectly true, is what we're looking for, um, is the A-D-J, or the adjacent, divided by the hypotenuse. So I'm just going to put those numbers in. The adjacent, I don't know. So I'm going to leave that as ADJ. You can write it as X if you want to. Um, I, again, I personally don't. I just leave it as ADJ. I know that's what I'm looking for. I know I'm looking for the adjacent. So it just makes it a little bit easier for me to visualize each time what I'm actually doing. Um, the hypotenuse I know is 6.2, so there it is. Okay, so let's just tidy this up a little bit, um, and then we'll look at um, a little bit of algebra, really, just to transfer the information across so I can work out the value of the adjacent. So we've got cos 24 degrees equals the adjacent, divided by 6.2. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just find the value of the adjacent. Now the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by 6.2, because if I do that, on this side it's divided by 6.2, which means I can cancel that out, and I'm just left with the adjacent. Now, if you want to have a look at uh, mathsrap.co.uk or the uh, YouTube channel, there is a playlist on dealing with um, algebraic equations, and you can have a look and see what I'm actually doing here in order to isolate and get my adjacent on one side and my calculations on the other. Okay, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 6.2 times 6.2. And that means that this side, I've got 6.2 times the cosine of 24 degrees equals this side, I've got the adjacent. Because this 6.2 division and this 6.2 multiplication has cancelled themselves out. Okay, so if I put that into my calculator now, it's going to give me a very long number. Um, and I'm just checking my notes here. It's 5.6... Oh, six, three, nine, so on, blah, blah, blah. Okay, and that's the value of the adjacent. Okay, with a lot of these questions, um, they wouldn't expect you to write this out to 10 decimal places. They would normally ask you, as it has done here, is to ask you to uh, correct this to three significant figures. Okay, so my third significant figure is 6, so I look at my fourth in order to check whether I need to uh, round it up or keep it the same. So it's 3, if it's below 5 I'm going to keep it the same. So to three significant figures the value of the adjacent is 5.66. Okay. So a couple of things, just to finish up, just to make sure that you're going to maximise your marks on a question like this. Um, firstly, we need to make sure that we put in the units. And secondly, we need to tell the examiner that uh, the correct answer by usually writing it underneath or at the side. But either way, make it fairly clear to the examiner that this is your particular answer. So I'm going to write it, just for the purposes of this, I'll write it here. So x equals 5.66 centimetres. So it's very important to make sure you include the units as well. So 5.66 centimetres, and that's to three significant figures. OK, I think finally, just as a, a final sort of parting comment really, is that when you're doing a calculation like this, it's always good to ask yourself, is that, is that a reasonable answer? So 5.66 centimetres, is that kind of reasonable? Well, if you look at the drawing, yes, 
Yes, it is, because the hypotenuse is six, just over six centimetres. So it seems to make sense that this value of x is oh, about five and a half centimetres. Um, if we'd got a value of x of something like 56.67 meter uh, centimetres, so if it was 56 centimetres long there, it would probably be quite unreasonable and wouldn't fit in with the diagram, so you might want to check a calculation. Um, so in this particular instance, I think 5.66 is fairly reasonable answer for this type of calculation. Um, I hope that's been helpful to you. Please do have a look at the website, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube, YouTube channel. Um, please post, tweet, pin this particular video and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.